Welcome to the Jen and Margie Show. I'm Margie Wigan. We're glad you could join us. And we have some really big news before we start our show. We are now going to be the Lisa and Margie Show because we now have Lisa Jackson joining us as our co-host. Awesome. Thank and we you. are very happy to see you. Cheers. Oh, cheers. Yes. Cheers on our, our new venture. So I'm going to switch out my Jen and Margie mug, even though I'm sad Jen can't join us. Lisa is going to be awesome. So tonight's topics are going to be, we're going to start talking about the Main Street Corridor Project. I know you and I do that drive all the time, every yeah. day. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. And then we're going to talk about the kneeling or not kneeling for the national anthem controversy. And then finally, we're going to talk a little bit about the events in Las Vegas and gun control, um, whatever your thoughts are. So please join the conversation. Our phone number is 508-4397. Um, not, uh, I forgot. Now, uh, it's on your screen. And <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and um, or email us live at jenandmargie.com, but that might be changed too. Live at Jen and Margie. Anyway, it's on the screen. I'll just rely on the people in the booth to get that all right. <laughs> so it's a, it's a little different with... That's another topic of conversation is we don't remember phone numbers anymore. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, you we know, put like, it all on our cell phone. Yeah, exactly. Set it and forget it. Yeah. I think it's 4357880. four. 508-435-7880. It's because I didn't do a show last week or the week before that. So anyway, <laughs> that's what I'm going with. Um, so Lisa, welcome. Thank you. Welcome I'm excited. to our show. Thank you. It's great having you. you. I yep. appreciate it. And I'm looking forward to talking about a lot of these topics. I think they're fresh on people's minds. And I think um, Margie and I have talked a lot back and forth. We'd like to have input from you the viewers on topics you'd like us to speak about and, and raise in the community so um, we can have a discussion about it. Right. Yes. And you can email us, as we said, um, live at Jen and Margie. That's probably going to change to Margie and Lisa. But for tonight, I think it's still live at Jen and Margie. Um, and you can watch us, uh, you know, and, and please call in. Um, we can disguise your voice if you need us to. Or you could just talk higher or talk lower if you don't <laughs> want people to know it's you calling and sharing your opinion. Um, we would just love to have it be an interactive show because for us, it's a community conversation. Yeah. It is, you know, we can talk forever, but it, it isn't about our conversation or information. It's about what you bring to it. Okay, right. And so. we want to reach out to you, the public, to feel, to know what your thoughts are on all these issues that are coming up. And it's, I mean, there's always something going on locally, statewide, and nationally that is certainly a topic of discussion and what we see on the news and, and what we're discussing with our friends and family members. Right. Thank mm -hmm. you. Exactly. Okay, so let's start with the Main Street Corridor conversation. Yep. Um, were you at the, or have you watched the, the meeting that they had, Norman Kamalo introduced? No, and okay. I haven't, and I, you know, I'm, you know, this will be a nice conversation for me because I'm a little bit ignorant on it, so I will ask Margie a lot of questions. Um, certain things I certainly believe, I would love to see our downtown more walkable. Um, that has always been a mission of mine, um, serving in the community with the Trails Club and things like that. But I, I think bike lanes are very important, and then parking is, you know, difficult down there. So there are all a lot of things, but how do you work around the bricks and mortar exactly. that's down there? Like, exactly. how do you how do you work around the, the, the logistical issues? I mean, there are some, I, I mean, I can see it, but it's, it's it's going to be challenging. Right. And they did, um, mm -hmm. they, they talked about the sidewalks mm -hmm. at um, last town meeting. meeting. And so it actually is now happening. Yes. We're seeing the sidewalks coming yeah, in front of Weston yeah. Nurseries yep. and toward um, the Ashland line. I believe they're also headed in the other direction yes, towards 495. Yep. So it's great to have that walkability, like right. you said. And one thing that I noted from the Hopkinton Independent article that came out this week is that bike lanes are actually a part of a requirement right. of getting the grant. Mass, so, gen, um, mass highway laws, you know, to get the grant from yep, Mass, mass it's, DOT. Yeah. So it says, yes, with any project funded by state and federal funds, bike lanes must be part of the project, but there is some flexibility in the design. 
-hmm. And one thing that I had concerns with that I raised a question at the meeting was how are they going to do the bike lanes? Right. Because what John Betchart was saying, um, it was three different things. Yeah. So he had one that had a, a bike lane, so it was a raised curb, a bike lane, and then the sidewalk. Hmm. So I thought, well, so two tiers. It's gonna be well, almost like a curb in between the road okay. and the bike oh, lane, I've and then those. another curb. Yeah. But yeah. then I'm thinking, what happens to the marathon runners? Right. If that's in their well, their, and, and that can be a hazard on a bike. I don't know if you, you ridden a bike and hit a curb of and a squirrel. Yeah. Because if a squirrel goes and you have to turn, right? So you don't. Right. And then. So I think it'd be almost like a gradient thing if I they think did that something would be like that. Very awkward. Yeah. Right. A gradient would be better. And then the other thing they said, which really confused me, was they want to have a two-way bike lane on one side of Route 85. Okay. So you have your two lanes of traffic. And then on the side you have a two-way bike lane. Oh, but that that doesn't make sense to no, me it either. No, Because I mean, like you really we're used to going. We're supposed to go with the flow of traffic. Exactly. And I think that would confuse drivers. I think it would confuse drivers, and I would I would because be I would be a little hesitant. Like you know, walkers, you're obviously aware of they're moving slower. But if you have bike lanes, exactly, we were taught to ride along with the traffic. Right. So exactly. That's, that's a little tricky, you know, and that's, right. yeah, I mean, like, how do you come up with a sound answer to that? And that's a hard question. I mean, I ride bikes all the time, and I've ridden bikes in the city, and I, you know, I enjoy riding, but, you know, honestly, I wouldn't, I've ridden down 135. It's, yeah. It's a little scary. It is scary. I would prefer to ride in Boston, to be quite honest <laughs> with you. You well, know, you I know, know. but I mean, there's traffic slower, and, and right. people are aware of pedestrians, and there's, there's just more activity there that people are more alert. I mean, I think our community roads here in Hopkinton people are used to really only one form of transportation is cars and then you add biking and walking that's a it's, that it's scary to me yeah and, and the speed limit will have to change and like or and then, something and then even with the main street um, corridor plan like what do you do you know we, we have traffic on 135 right now but like how much does that like everything flows through there during the construction phase there's I, really I mean, no way around it so well, there's got to be some exactly and it's already <laughs> difficult i know because at elmwood school when the buses are coming in they're yep. coming in more slowly yep. because they get bogged down in the sidewalk yeah uh, construction yeah one thing the other thought i had is if you have cars going two ways, you have bike lanes, right. and you have pedestrians, and you have a texter yeah. who, God forbid, looks down and wheel turns, right? you right. know, and then you have the bike there, or right. if there are parking spaces, um, that's another conversation. So that something that would make sense to me is maybe the curb in between the car lane and the bike lane. That's what they're saying. I mean, that that makes sense to me, not necessarily in between the walkers and the, the bikers. I right. think that just complicates things. But they were talking about passing car lane, bike lane, parked cars. Oh. So parked car opens its door, Right. Biker hits door. The whole thing just. I mean, seems, do we have the square footage? I mean, that's, I don't think so. Yeah, I, don't I think mean, the that's, road is wide enough. Right. It doesn't make sense. But we would love to hear what you think. Yes. Please call us. Please email us. Join the conversation. Um, give us some some positive thoughts, some negative that we you know we really would like you to to join us and, and let us know what you think. Well, what would make you use the downtown more? I think that's what we're yeah. trying to do with this well, main street corridor. Is I'm you not know. sure. It seems like they want with corridor seems like a oh, hallway. Sure. It seems to me like they want to move the traffic through faster to get to 495, get where they're going, as opposed right. to slow it down and enjoy the shops. That's my big concern. If uh, they can't, if there isn't adequate parking, right. and it's going, if they're making it It's going to look like faster, Wellesley Center. Well, <laughs> well, not for nothing. I mean, uh, Except Wellesley Center does have parking and bike lanes. Right, right. But it's much wider than we already have. Right, right. So I'm not, I'm not sure how it's all going to work physically, yeah. square footage. And I personally would like to see one kind of bike lane. Yeah. Instead oh, yeah. Of all these different. Absolutely. Hey, we have an email. Oh, cool. So I have an email from Tom that says, I think people are not going to use the bike lanes. They zigzag around and are two inches higher, not user friendly. I think the town should look at a city that has done it right, Cambridge. Oh, sure. Oh, Cambridge has done a wonderful right? job. And right. I've ridden all over, actually, thank bike you, Tom. Yeah, thank, thank you, you Tom. Comment. 
Yeah, and, and I mean, they they have integrated, you know, I mean, it's a city. So, and, and I've actually ridden bikes in Cambridge yeah. this summer. Right. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? And, and it has done well, you know. And again, it's I think culturally it's going to be a change for our community right. in that awareness level. So I think also along with this, you know, we do look at best practices at a city that's done it well. Um, but we also want to, you know, build awareness amongst the community so they know this is forthcoming and, Absolutely. you know, the attitude changes a little bit, you know, about that. Because I, I would love to see downtown Hopkinton more user-friendly. I totally agree. You, you know, I mean, and Celia always says, I would yeah. love to ride my bike to school. Exactly. Oh. I would love to, wa- not now. Right. I mean, no, Ooh. but I mean, like, how would we do that? Because we live, at, Margie and I happen to live on the Ashland side of Hopkinton, but that that's that narrow section of 135. And right. And I do appreciate that it is going to be possible to walk two miles to mm-hmm. town, um, and possibly they could bike on that sidewalk. Right. However, I still have concerns um, right. because of the speed. It's a 40-mile road there. Well, and I think, I mean, there, I've ridden along the Charles River many times, so that's an, I mean, you have a 20-foot easement, am I correct, from the road back? Either 15 or 20. 15 or 20. So there's an easement that really the town owns that property right. yep. and are, has the right-of-way, I guess. It's right. more of a right-of-way or an, not an easement. Yes. But you look at that, so maybe, like, it sounds like people worried about integrating walkers and bikers. I don't think we're going to have that kind of traffic, so maybe we do a smaller I mean, I've looked a lot at this just from my planning process with the center trail, um, but like, it's okay, I think, to integrate the walkers and bikers. Why do we need to separate them? Right. You say you're on, I'm on your left. I'm passing, I or agree. I slow down, or you give somebody the right of way. So I think, you know, again, that goes back to education and, and having those two separate lanes. I agree with Tom. Yes. You know that Cambridge is definitely a good model. Yeah. Yeah. On that, so there's a, a lot of best practices we can look at and. Right. You know, it's hard to compare Hopkinton with Cambridge, but you can just look at the thumbprint of what, you know, what's happening. Yeah, and I think you're right that the speed, Yeah. there's no one going 40 miles an hour on Mass Ave. No. Because you can't. It's too too congested, and you have the bikers and the parkers and the walkers and everything else. And I think that awareness level, I mean, I drive very differently in the city than I do in, in Hopkinton. I mean, not that I'm not aware, but, you know, you're not used to seeing that type of traffic right i have another email it says and this is i totally agree with this it's very sad that the town is going to harm main street businesses by removing so much parking that's going to hurt and just and i totally agree with you um whoever emailed that thank you so much um what i what i did note um in terms of the parking they have uh there are going to be only 82 spaces down from 98 Oh, that's um, a big difference. Right, and they're doing some very interesting configurations. They're putting four spaces on Grove Street um, just past the uh, corner um, gas station. Gotcha. Because in order to straighten out that... Next to the library? Or? Nope. Where's the... Next, it's right across from the ATM that used to be there. Oh. Yeah, across okay. from CVS. So what happened was to straighten out that intersection, they're moving that road over... So that when you come up by the post office and CVS and the yeah. gas station, you're going to be more straight across. So they're they're pushing out. Because that is always out. kind of a blind. Exactly. Yeah, taking the left from the the post exactly. office. Exactly. Yeah. So they're pushing over into those spaces on the CVS side. Yeah. And and moving out the the sidewalk with a little grassy area and for parking spaces. Uh, but to me, I'm not sure if you park there to walk around to right. Hopkinton Gourmet. I I don't know. But um, so we're losing some. That's a problem. And maybe businesses, I mean, there would be, I think, like a city, you would have to have more restrictions. It would be temporary parking. Or and, yeah, 10 yeah. minutes or 5 15. Yeah, right. So yeah. I think that might be an answer to something like that because I'm sure there's lots of people that work down there, which exactly. I don't want to, which is a problem for them if they can't park, but maybe right. provide just an easier right. way because, like, if you want people to go down there, even now, even with the town hall closed, it's still hard to find a parking spot. And that's the other thing they mentioned was, well, we have f- how many spaces at St. John's Church, right? but that's that's not really very close. Well, well and, and do you use a private property for public that's, parking? But they and, have an agreement with oh, St. John's. Oh, they do? John's. There oh. is an agreement, 
But okay. my, what I'm saying is I think it's far enough away that people are, are uh, someone coming to stop for coffee and wants right. to keep going is gonna not going to want to go up the street. It's at least a block. Right. They're going to And then pull. come back down the, it's two blocks from the, from the gourmet to the, up to the Because I mean, block, from Hockington Gourmet, there's very few parking spots. Right. They, they had more. They cut it already. So yeah. that's one concern. Um, but the, John Batchard was saying that some of the parking spots we had were not in compliance with a certain amount of distance from sure. a stop light corner thing right so we probably and that's why they had to move the ones in front of hopkington drive exactly when that used to be there right exactly yeah. so there there were some spaces we had that we weren't supposed to have i understand that right um but and then they mentioned oh there are six spaces at the um police station but again uh, who does that benefit yeah you know the the 77 main here but all actually the if you look behind. at behind cvs that parking is always open and that's fairly Right. accessible more accessible than the police station anyway right. exactly so can they people park there though or are they supposed to be cvs right that saying? would be theoretically it's, right. it's the same thing with hopkinton drug because i know the fire department spaces. there's only a tiny bit of parking exactly. behind the fire department right. and there's yep. always tons of parking behind so CVS. parking is a big issue yeah. um the other thing in accessibility exactly um some of the goals are to um improve the uh improve the um, the traffic operations and reduce congestion, improve bicycle and pedestrian accommodations and safety, enhance Main Street, improve and upgrade public and private utilities. Actually, um, Stephen says on Facebook, Stephen says, welcome to the show, Lisa. <laughs> Thank Yay! you. Thank you. Thanks, Stephen. Thank and, you. Um, and then Rosie says, hello, ladies. <laughs> it's way too busy now, unfortunately. Yeah. So in terms of, um, yeah, Main Street is too busy now. Yeah. Way too busy. The buses are going really slowly. Right. Because there are too many cars already. Well, in a, in a downtown area like that, the problem with us is there's no diversion. I mean, there's really no way around it. I mean, right. there, there's really, exactly. you know, like you can't divert traffic to a different area. Because, exactly. I, I mean, I'm back and forth there several yeah. times a day. Exactly. And it's, you know, there's just no, either I go all the way down to Clinton to Ash, right. which is around, totally around. And then... Yep. There aren't a lot of options. The traffic has to almost flow through that area. The only the only thought I think um, Legacy North was supposed to f take some traffic off. Right, with a, and maybe when people with start that bypass. to right, people yeah. start to understand They're starting that. Starting to use it. Yeah. Starting to use it a little bit because as you're coming up 85, yeah. Legacy North is where the Bay Path Humane Society yep. is. So you go that way, you come out, it takes yep. you right up, dumps you at West right, Nurseries. Right, right at the Legacy perfect. Farms, yeah. But then what I've noticed is a lot of people are coming out of Legacy or that congested area and using Cross Street as a cut through. Right. In the morning, and, right. and that's that's a scenic route, so that's not ideal. Well, that's either. a tough route. I mean, exactly. how many times have we seen accidents yep. right in front not of your good house? Because you, <laughs> yeah. there are terrible lines, yeah. of, terrible lines of sight there. Right. Um, so one thing that I that I thought was interesting was in terms of enhancing mm -hmm. Main Street. I'm not sure what would be enhanced. Mm -hmm. You know, if they're thinking of the thinking of the um, power lines. Right. But the other thing I read here was. Betchard explained that the realignment of the Main Street intersection became part of the plan with the closing of Coelas. Yeah. But this is what's interesting. The undergrounding of utilities is something the town is committed to, but MassDOT is taking a wait-and-see approach right. because they need to have private commitments to pay for that work. Right. So it is in public funding completely. Right. There's still going to be uh, some of the landscaping utility upgrades are outside of the $8 million, have to be have to wait to be explored have not finished the design plans yet. Right. So the and whole how do thing you get funding might that, not yeah. even happen. Right. So anyway, thank you guys so you. Um, for calling in and giving us your thoughts and your Facebook comments. We are going to take our first break, and um, we'll be back. Hi, this is Kate O'Connor reporting live for HCAM Television. I'm here with the girls' varsity volleyball team raising money for Dick Pig. So, ladies, when is the match? The freshmen dig pink games at 5.30 in the Brown Gym at the Middle School. 
Conference, the JV game is at 5.30 in the Athletic Center. And the main event, the Varsity game, is at 6.30 in the High School Athletic Center. So what are some of the ways you guys are going to raise money? We do paper volleyballs in honor of people who have been affected by cancer, and we hang them up all around the gym. We'll be selling some memorial balloons that you can buy um, to show support for people that have been affected by cancer. We're going to have an assortment of raffle baskets, including Varsity's basket, which is a Patriots tailgate basket, including a copy of Tom Brady's new book, TB12. So what are some ways that people can show their support? Donate some money by entering in the raffles for the baskets or just donating in general for the Dig Pink Foundation. You can fill the stand. You can wear pink and be loud. Come and support us Friday, October 13th. This week on Hopkin and Coffee Break, Patricia and Connie keeps us up to date with all the happenings coming up this week in Hopkin. November. November. Yeah, 5Ks and galas, you know, up and down. Well, and, and there have been a bunch of 5Ks. There's a bunch coming up. Right, coming up. Um, I know. Let's give a few minutes shout outs. We've got a respite center coming, coming up on the 21st. Yes. There's the, the um, HCA. And we're back. <laughs> Welcome back to the Margie and Lisa show. Look, oh, nice. we have a new logo behind us due to the magic of Mike <laughs> and the sound booth people. Um, thank you, Mike. And we have our mugs, Margie and Lisa. Yep. It's a wonderful thing. Oh, yep. I forgot to talk about Oh, no, um, they're good. Yeah. <laughs> so in this part of our show, we're going to talk about the kneeling controversy. Mm -hmm. To kneel or not to kneel at the anthem, is it free speech or is it disrespectful? And um, we can both see both sides of this. Right. So we're going to talk a little bit about what we think and some of, of the notes that I've taken on conversations. But we really want your opinions. We, we want do. you to be yeah. part of the conversation. Feel free to Facebook us. Um, email is live at Jen and Margie. Um, Facebook, just go to our Facebook page and, and send us a, a Facebook message. Or you can call 508-435-7880. Please be part of the conversation because we want to talk to you guys too. Right. It's an interesting so. conversation because um, I wasn't aware of, I mean, I've gone to football games and I knew they kneeled, but I wasn't aware of a, a disrespect happy not kneeling. So, you know, but I was like, okay, well, that's what they do. And this is protocol or this is like when you, you know, you pledge hand allegiance or when you're singing the national anthem, right. you put your hand on your heart. And I feel very strongly about that. Right. But then, you know, the kneeling thing, I think it's a sign of respect. But I think also that the message from what I've seen is a little misconstrued. I mean, it's, it's used, it's turned into a political thing, which I think both people, both sides wanted to do you know i think it's turned into a sure. political message conversation yeah conversation which is a good thing mm -hmm. um but to to i think what starts the conversation is trying to see both sides right and to try be okay well i do understand that that is a sign of respect to kneel and that's what football players do and that's that's the tradition you know and the more i read into it it's not the law it's it's strongly encouraged is what i read today right um but but also you know i I don't think they were disrespecting the American flag. They were making a statement. Exactly. You know, it's like protesting or marching or, or holding a sign or, right. you know, something like that. So right. what were your thoughts on well, that? Well, and I, um, I had similar thoughts. Um, I'm very respectful of the flag myself. Yeah. Um, I've been, you know, a Boy Scout leader and all of the Cub Scouts and, yeah. and everything. Um, so I have great respect for the flag, but I also feel that one of the incredibly valuable things about being an American yeah. is our right sure. to free speech. Right. So. Well, and another thing I thought that was very interesting, which I didn't know, is you see all the clothing that, and that's, sure. that's actually against the law, right. which I didn't know. Well, you, you know what I mean? So there were some funny, you know, things on Facebook and, and poignant statements about that. So, right. you know, I think, you know, it's it's hard to draw that line in the totally sand. Totally hard to draw you, that you line. You know what I mean? So I think that's where it gets a little fuzzy, I guess. And, right. You know, and I can see both sides, but I think this is an opportunity to kind of listen both sides and, and say, yes, we do respect the flag. And I think the one, the players that are not kneeling, 
kneeling are saying. We respect the flag. Yes. But this is our opportunity to to really bring attention right. to this issue. So, I mean, right. and, and I think it's a valid issue. I mean, it, sure. it, that's, you know, I, I think really the flag represents what their issue is, well, and <laughs> you, I, you know, and without I, a lack of a better term. I you know, agree. like I just think it's, yeah. you know, it's freedom and equality for all. Right, so, and I and, think that's the point is, in, they're not disrespecting. They feel disrespected. Yes. So yeah. because they feel disrespected, right? And they are saying, and they're not, they're not honestly. They're not kneeling, disrespecting. Kneeling the flag. isn't kneeling is a position you take to pray. Right. Kneeling is a position you take right. to give honor to your king. You right. know. So kneeling in itself is and traditionally as an American of we put it we put our hands on our chest of course. and that's I mean I wouldn't think of kneeling in the stands that's what I'm saying or, or kneeling at a school event or you know I go to a lot of political events I wouldn't think of kneeling there either right right you know and I know it's tradition you know but yep. I think you know people are misconstruing or, or, or they're interpreting it in their own, it, maybe. I mean, it a, in their yeah. own way we yeah. do have an email yeah good. Um, from Michael Michael says, I believe in your rights, but would you begin a protest in the middle of your job? Very good point, Michael. So it's interesting. I have brought this up in my job. My job's political, and, you know, I, I do disaster response, and if mm -hmm. I feel strongly about something, I will voice my opinion. And that's right. why I serve on committees and things like that. Um, I don't find that this is... They're not doing it in a disrespectful way. I agree. They're not slandering anybody. They're just they're just bringing up a point. So yeah. if anything, probably in my professional life, I have, may have brought it up stronger um, mm -hmm. in a way, something that I didn't, I believed in equality. So disaster response, I teach cultural competency mm -hmm. and how we treat different populations in a shelter or during a disaster. It's, you know, you have to, be sensitive to of course to cultural what, differences yeah cultural right. differences but mm -hmm. you always always have to treat people with equality i mean and right. i think that's you know from what i see is the issue and honestly i've never went seen or other than on television or been a victim of pr police brutality but i mean if you've seen it or you've had family members that have right. had it right. that's going to change your opinion about it so like i think you mm -hmm. know, it's it's valid, and that's why we're having this conversation to to think about. Well, so why are they bringing this up? Why is this an issue? And and professionally, it depends on the job. Yeah, yeah no, I mean, exactly. some jobs you could bring it up. Other things, and I'm sure working in the school system, you've you've brought up things as well. Yep, I have another email from James. James, who says, "Isn't it ironic that vets protect our rights to protest?" Yeah. But they have the deepest of respect for our flag. Right. And then he says, I think they have more respect for the flag because they have lived their lives protecting right. it right. with their very lives. And that's so, a total, I mean, and I totally exactly. respect that. Exactly. Thank you, that. James. Yeah. And, and that's, and that, you know, and I think this is a complicated, it's, I think it's more complicated than the kneeling and oh, not totally. kneeling. I mean, right. and I think that's kind of where it's, right. from my viewpoint of what I've seen it represented on the news and, right. and politically, it doesn't. It doesn't feel like the conversation is getting deep enough to really flesh out. Because, I mean, I have deep, deep respect for the flag. Of course, and me too. I mean, I love my country, and yep. I love where I me live, too. and I'm so grateful for all the things people have done to make right. it very livable for me and my family mm -hmm. and very comfortable. And I, I've traveled all over the world. I still think the U.S. is, is a, it op offers so many opportunities. All right, I you, agree. You know, so, but, like, how do you, you know, like, it's, but I also believe in free speech, and I believe right. in that conversation because in my world we're not seeing this in Hopkinton you know what I mean as far as I know but you know what I mean but you know like we we don't witness this we're not in Oakland or we're not in you know I've been in parts of Dallas I mean in, in Atlanta and in cities where this there is a disparity right and so because <clears throat> there are a few platforms that would be this effective. Yeah. They're making a stand. And it's a peaceful a, stand. And they're not taking a stand. They're taking a knee yeah. to to speak up about something that really does affect the whole nation. Right. And they, they have an opportunity to be that visible. Right. You know, and, and state, state, state that point. Um, just to give you, uh, just to recap some of the development, um, Bill Belichick, when they did the... Uh, 
the the Patriots linked arms. Yes. So the first time they kneeled. Right. Second time they linked arms, but they stood. Right. So they were unified. Right. In and respecting the flag, but at the same time saying we are unified. Right. We have black pair players. We have right. you know players of many and different that's, cultures. That's the statement. But we are that, a team. Yeah. The same way our country should be. Right. Together. And I think why it's such a hot topic is because. In the last year, I've seen a great divide in our country, oh which gosh. I, you know, and it's, it's sad. People that I agree with and not yeah. agree with it, it, there's there's such a line drawn in the sand. And, and what makes us what? different and what makes a democracy is people coming together and, and discussing things and, and coming up with the best resolution for everybody. Right. So, and I think what I, you know, what I'm seeing from a personal standpoint is that divide is happening Everywhere, and it, it's unfortunate. Instead of saying, "Hey, wow, you know, we should what respect us together." Yeah, yeah. You know, Instead like we do respect us. the flag, but we do want to have this discussion. Right, I agree. <clears throat> and um, another thing that happened: Directv said they were going to have a full cancellation of the NFL season if the customer wants to cancel because of not standing. There were people who were burning their team shirts. Uh, if the right, they said, I'm, I can't believe they didn't stand. I'm gonna burn my shirt. Which but costs, that seems so rash. Well, that's a rash. very, yeah. exactly. It yeah, is a very it's... extreme response. Then um, Tuesday, Roger Goodell sent a letter to the teams asking them to stand for the anthem. Sunday, Pence took a plane on the government dollar, yeah, our money, to the million? Colts game, <laughs> yeah. left the Colts game because he wouldn't stay where the flag wasn't being respected. Um, NFL owners are considering a rule change. So it's an ongoing conversation, um, but you know, some of these, some of the, I think there are the political statements on both sides. Right. And a I lot of it's too. posturing, Yeah. you know, and not, not just in the literal posture of kneeling or standing, right. but you know, Mike Pence, yeah, well, I understand what he, he did, a, but and I, I unfortunately, and I think that's where our government stood. It hasn't, um, and I'm going to try to be apolitical, but right. I think <laughs> it's. I think as the leader of our country, we need to bring people together and and, exactly. and just say, well, I'm listening to what right. you guys are saying. I don't agree right. with it, right? But I, you know, isn't that what? you do as a politician isn't that what you do as a public servant isn't exactly. that what you do as an elected official right you listen to the people that voted for you and you represent people that didn't right so i mean and wouldn't it have been better to instead of exacerbate the problem yeah with rhetoric yeah wouldn't it have been or better politicize it exactly yeah. to yeah. to say i understand that you're feeling upset about this let's have a conversation right you know instead of the, the reason they're still protesting is because they have not been heard right they have not been responded to in a way that makes them feel validated sure you know so let's find another well, way if anything it's been disrespectful the exactly. way it's been handled uh, totally disrespectful. and and you know and Honestly, I didn't look. I mean, I I was offended when I first saw it. I'm like, oh my god, they're not they're not kneeling to the flag, and isn't that what they do? And Sandy. you know, and I was listening. You know, that I'm like, why are they doing this? And then I was like, well, wait a minute. Like, let's listen a little bit more. Right. Because I was like, oh right. You know, we right. see stuff on our Facebook feed, and we make a decision right away. Right. But I don't think I I would like to think us as a culture at this stage in time that we are more open minded. Exactly. And I mean, by us working together and having these conversations we make it better for everybody right instead of making a ha harsh decision because you know I'm still I waver a little bit on either side of that you yeah. know but I also now I have a deeper understanding of why they've done it sure. and you know it takes a lot of guts for someone to do that well that's what for I was one. Thinking and obviously too. that's you know they have strong feelings about it and they they have a venue to express it Right. You know. So we would love to hear what you think. Yes. Please call us, 508-435-7880. Tell us what you think about this. Should they kneel? Should they stand? Is it disrespectful if they kneel? What if they stand with their arms linked? Mm -hmm. um, and and should they be heard in their, their concern? Right. Um, how could ownership have done, dealt with this better? Um, I'm actually kind of proud of the um, Patriots. Patriots. Mm -hmm 
for for supporting each other. Right. You know, and they're not saying, oh, you guys, just stop that. You don't no. have to, why are you doing that? They they understood well, the team. concern. They're, they're a team. team. So they're they team. really listened and they, they felt that concern right. that um, that they were having and they supported right. those who were feeling disrespected. Right. Um, and, and again, I don't think they not, intend to disrespect the flag. They just want to have their issue heard. Right. And I and they've made that statement quite vehemently across, you know, as much as they could to say, like, we, we're not doing this to disrespect the flag. Right. And actually, if you think about it, if you really wanted to get to brass tacks about, they're not. It's, it's tradition. Speech. Yeah. 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 You know, you know what I mean? So you have to kind of look at that. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, if they were doing something much harsher. Right. You know, I mean, I there's agree. a lot of things they could do. I more, agree. More than kneeling that would be, I agree. you know, disrespectful. Right. But, you and know. You, you actually mentioned um, a lot of people wear a flag for clothing. Right. I have a scarf that looks right. like a flag. Um, I know people have flag on their shirt. Right. Uh, you know, they're probably Coffee mugs. Flag. And you know, I aware. work for the government. I have red, white, and blue things that right. I take to my MRC is red, white, and blue. So right. I well, have red, white, and blue. I think is okay, but, but I, I mean, I look at patriotic things, exactly. and I mean, even my actually my certificates I give have a flag emblem Background. in the back, but it's not right. the true flag. You know, then that started making me think. Well, wait a minute. Right. You know, here I am representing the government and, right. and giving people certificates for learning on how to protect their community and then i'm like wait a minute like if you look at the actual right legality of it then i'm like whoa i'm gonna change so maybe that's a good thing but again my opinion on this is that you know we're at a stage i believe culturally that we should be lifting each other up right and and we should be looking at a resolution and and without conflict or without a conversation nothing's going to change right and also i think it's really important to come together yes you know so if some people are not happy let's find a compromise right. or let's listen to their concerns sure. and help them to feel respected and heard you know, and visit the concern they're talking about. If they're sure. talking about police brutality. And it'll brutality change maybe what or, we think about things or we get a better understanding right. of why and they I, do And it, I yeah. think, if I'm not mistaken, which I could be, um, that their bottom line concern is with the administration response. I don't think yes. it's police. I think it's the, the, administ the oh, current I agree president with you. And I, and isn't respecting or, or coming to help or answering the concerns quickly well, and, enough and respectfully. They're supposed to lead the country. Right. And, and I'm not going to be super political about this, but if you look at what the president's job and the administration is to do is to, right. to lead our country. And they're not going to agree with anything, but again, they need to kind of put forward a stance that says, hey, let's let's resolve this. Right. You know, and, and then that would have been right. something, you know, I was unhappy with that response to it just because it, it made me feel sour almost mm -hmm. like wow you know like part of me is like ooh, you know like i and i don't want to feel that way about of course not yeah and, and the government you know it's okay to be pol political and there's campaigns and and in times you'd say that but when you're a leader and when you when you have to oversee a lot i do it all the time i cover seven medical reserve corps units and i have to be very very PC about what I say because I speak for a lot of voices. Right. You know, exactly. and, and you, what I, my job is to do is to coordinate and to direct and bring things together. Right. You know, and I really look at the government as that's their role. It is. And they serve the people, and the, very, all of the people. <laughs> it's very divisive right now. Yeah. A um, lot, of, lot of divisive language and um, disrespectful language. Yeah. So, you know, I, I think. I'm proud of the people that were brave enough mm -hmm. to say, hey, this isn't right. Yeah. We need to be heard. I'm proud of the people that supported them. Yeah. I disagree with disrespecting the flag, but I don't think that's what right. they're doing. I think they're making a statement mm -hmm. um, and trying to just get their point across. Right. So if they're not being heard, it's just going to go on longer and longer. Well, and in essence, I guess probably the reaction from the White House or from from the Trump administration has brought more light to it. That's, so there's a there's a there's a sunny side to it. I agree with you. You, you know what I mean? So maybe that's good. I right. mean, like then because right. I didn't know. I'm like, well, why aren't they seeing? You know, <laughs> you know, like. But to me, that that is a good thing. And right. and when I talk to my 13 year old daughter, she's like, that's awful. I said, but you know what that brings up forefront and we have the conversation. I agree with you. And on that note, 
We're going to take our next break, and we'll be back to talk about the events in Las Vegas. Hope you'll join us. Please call in and join the conversation. Hearing is, if you're around people that are kind of trying to go for it. This week on Character Matters. Margie Wigan and, um, heads out to find out why it is great you. to be hey, grateful. Freddy, Freddy. Now I'm going to write in it too. I'll write in it all the time and I'll think about you and your grateful, gracious, wonderful friendship. Oh, that's so nice. Let's be grateful together. Yay! This week on HK. The Downtown Carter oh, Project alive. Public okay. Forum took place at the Hockey so and Senior the, Center. The Mass Dot and District uh, Office in Worcester contacted the town and said, hey, this is an opportunity, you need to explore this because we can really make some improvements along the corridor with congestion if we're able to uh, acquire some property and do some realignment of the intersection. Expansion of the town common and green space in the town was also mentioned by Norman. W you know, some of the data that- If the equity is higher than $840,000, El Delar attorney, Arthur Bergeron, is back at the city center to teach us how to protect our home as we get older. In, on the Cape, I spoke to the insurance agent about this, um, in which that the person had bought a long-term care insurance policy, houses worth, lived in the, on the Cape, houses worth more than a million dollars. They applied, and the caseworker denied the, the, the application. Um, but nobody appealed. Question? And we're back. So in this part of our show, we're going to talk about um, the sad events in Las Vegas. We're going to talk about gun control a little bit. Um, and, you know, what, what are the issues here? Uh, Trevor Noah on Saturday Night Live had a, a very funny thing, um, even though it's not a funny issue, to say that where we focused on the uh, hotel is the problem, when in fact, the gun and the bump stock that was added to the gun to make it a rapid fire weapon seems to be more of an issue than uh, the hotel. So I do have to say that, um, that doing some research on this, um, there was a worker, Stephen Shook, I think, was checking a jammed fire door. Um, as he came to, to look at that, there's a security guard who had already been shot through the door uh, that told him to take cover. This happened six minutes before the mass shooting. So apparently, um, they were trying to radio to say, you know, there's a, sh there's a shooter. Um, and, but in that time frame, that's six minutes because of the bump stock that just goes, ba 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 ba. Mm -hmm. um, 58 people were killed, um, several wounded, yeah. you know. And, and mass panic and terrorism on a local scale right. um, by a crazy person. Yeah. So, you know, and it's interesting. Um, I grew up in Idaho and I shot guns my whole life and I've used semi-automatic guns. Um, and I have to say I enjoy shooting them, but it, you know, I, I, you, you would never bring it, any responsible gun owner would never bring it into no. a hotel or, you know, to, so like, how do you regulate that? And I was having a sidebar with Margie prior to the show. And I said, I moved out here from Idaho, having guns since I was 11 years old, shooting guns and, and still go home and shoot guns. There are certain places where guns are better, you know, or they're more usable if you're a hunter or whatever, but I don't see a reason I think the the semi-automatic guns and all of this stuff they're 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 fun they're like a Porsche they're they're a Ferrari but but also is it when massive people die is that we need to look at, at what the regulations are and who gets the gun and how do you like you know and my brother would kill me for saying that but you know what I mean there has to be some What's wrong with having a mental health background check? What's wrong with limiting the amount of those semi-automatic guns? What's wrong with, you know, not having certain modifications? Like, whenever do you need a modification like that, other than at a right. gun range or, or in well, war? Well, not even a gun range. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think the issue here, this is a crazy person who mm -hmm. had 10 suitcases full of guns. Right, and he how did he purchase guns. all of them? Yeah. Right, and um, he was a high roller, mm -hmm. so they let him have a certain, you know, certain leniency, but that's how he got to the position that he was in. So, you know, I, 
I don't know if but we there's need to no have... security. I mean, like really, well, that's what I, I guess say. maybe with a hotel back to that hotel issue, and I haven't thought about it from that standpoint. Mm-hmm. I check into hotels all the time, and they've never. Right. I mean, granted, I flew right. there, and right. so like I didn't have much. Or, but when I've driven, I could very easily put a duffel bag full of guns. I mean right. that, and no one would even think twice. So how do you, like, where's some accountability? Does it turn into like an Screening airport? Screening at the yeah. At the I door. mean, but do we do that because yeah. of one person, or do we regulate the guns and what you can buy? Well, the and, recent the recently there was um, the NRA, some Republicans, and Trump agreed that regulating bump stock usage alone, which is the piece of equipment that converts the rifle to the automatic weapon by yep. just hitting the trigger, yep. um, firing continuously, is really only to kill people. Marco Rubio was one that I saw, Lindsey Graham and yep. some others. Um, and the thing is gun owners, gun owners used to reject any change to gun laws, but after Sandy Hook, right. there are several laws on the docket for votes um, you know, that, that are regarding these things because clearly it's not about using a rifle to go shoot. It's not about target practice. It's yeah. about it's a bad. weapon yeah. <laughs> or an addition to a weapon yeah. that can make it um, a, a weapon of mass destruction. destruction. Well, it is a weapon of mass destruction. And that's, that's the only thing it was for. Yeah. You know, and unfortunately in this case, a crazy person somehow, you know, clearly a very intelligent crazy person right. figured out you know, he probably had an escape route. He had a camera sure. on the, the um, what is that called, room service tray outside yep. the door to warn him if someone was coming. Right. You know, he had But again, it, and I think that goes back to, I mean, I teach disaster psychology, psychological first aid, and, and a piece of this I want to talk about, it's not only the people that were affected that right. died and right. the people that are wounded. It's right. all of us. I mean, there's a ripple effect on how a tragedy like that happens. And, right. you know, your children are going to be asking you, is it safe to go to a concert? Is of it is Las Vegas a safe place? Is You know yep. what I mean? So a lot of there's a there's a huge effect, right. not only to the people that actually died and the people that were wounded, but there's. There's a huge effect on on that and that that's safety what terrorism issue. Does. Terrorism well, it is terrorism makes people I, afraid to go right. anywhere. And I'm thinking also, in terms of that large crowd, um, you know, they he had researched yeah. Boston. Sure. He had researched Fenway it, Park. Yeah, yeah, Fenway Park. So, and there are hotels that have that yeah. view. So, right. crazy I mean, person. Right. You know, I mean, you can't you can't predict. Mental illness. Right. And that's and I think that's the statement I was just right. I wanted to address is, you know, like you say, OK, well, but you can limit the amount of artillery a, a person may have. And of maybe course. if it makes it like, why would you care? I mean, like if I want an arm firearm, it's OK to do a background check. I mean, right. my volunteers all get Corey Sorry checks to be a volunteer. But here's the problem, yeah, you, you with, know, with Stephen Paddock, he didn't there was nothing on right. the radar to show that he had any issues. Right. So, so how do you identify so that? You and can't. even as family, you can't. But you can limit the amount of right. like what the weaponry is. Right. I mean, like, right. I love shooting guns, but I love life a lot more. Right. So I, I would not if we don't want that bump stop. I mean, if that's gonna make it so people, why do you need an automatic don't, weapon? Don't really. Yeah. You know. I mean, again, it's that Ferrari or Porsche or bigger, better. I mean, I, I grew I up don't in know. a place. I've, I've driven a Porsche. I wouldn't compare that to a bump stock shooting of a gun. But Personally, it, that's I think it, you know, for my <laughs> family in Idaho and my friends that own guns, that's kind of it's Shooting collecting. An automatic weapon. Yeah, well, it's a collector's item, and, I, and I'm not. I don't think it's right, but I, I do see the mentality. They don't see it as a danger, and I think that's where we get in a divide in our country. Is people are thinking, well, geez, you know what? This this is a, you know, this is a dangerous weapon. Yes, it's very dangerous. I mean, I don't I don't have guns. I've taught well, my daughter I think any how to gun shoot. Is dangerous. Right, it is so, dangerous. But then, but like, why but do so we need is Clorox? Right. You know? So we can only drive our cars so fast. So this, let's go to the car analogy. It's only legal to drive our cars so fast. If we drive our cars too fast, our car has too much power. We can get arrested for it. It can be taken off the road. So why right. not something like that apply to yep. a gun? And I, I know in Idaho, I could walk into any store and buy whatever I wanted. So I mean, like, why not check? You know, like, why not at but least I think they have did some? Check him. But so not only the is, checking, but like the how many guns do you need? I mean, like, yeah, do I'm I, not sure if they. Ha- I, I don't know if the gun registry has any kind of 
you know, tally of how many guns right. in a short period of time are sold to one individual. Right. That would be a good that would be, be a, a good marker. In that the would regulation. be a marker. Yeah, and, and ammunition only, and, and right. certain. And I think a bump like stock. Maybe terrorism. maybe you. Yeah. I don't. I don't even know what to say about how to regulate that. Does anyone out in TV land have yes. an idea? <laughs> uh, you know, let us know if you have an idea about this. 508-435-7880 to give us a call right. or uh, go on Facebook and send us a message or email live at Jen and Margie.com and um, Jen and Margie until it becomes Lisa and Margie yeah. on, on email. My other thought, um, you talked about the psychological effect. Yeah. I cannot even look at the faces. Yeah. Uh, I can't. I just yeah. can't because my heart breaks Right. For well, every you know, it's interesting. One of them and their families and their children. I can't even imagine right. the horror of going to a concert, having a great time, and all of a sudden, right. you think it's fireworks. You don't know what it is, and you someone dies next to you. Someone dies. Right. You die. I yeah. just can't even imagine yeah. the horror of that. Well, I mean, the thing with that too is, um, you know, the psychological effects are huge. I mean, and, and we should feel safe in those venues. I mean, you get, you get. Search Screen yourself. Yeah, I mean, like you, you can't take backpacks in there in the screening. So why isn't there well, some no kind one thought of, of it before? Yeah, like, but I mean, when you think about it, I mean that you have to look at that. But also, yeah. you know, you think about one thing that I've been seeing in my world with the medical reserve volunteers. We're pushing stop the bleed. That's a new. Um, training that's come out with um, mm. HHS, hum Health mm -hmm. and Human Services, mm -hmm. and we'll be running those those trainings out so people understand on how to stop the bleed so you, can, so you can save lives. But, you know, again, like, do we put a Band-Aid on the problem or do we look at policy and, you know, like, I mean, do we... Or both. Yeah. I mean, like, I think there's a, there's a, there's this conversation is incredibly worthy. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're going from one minute to talking about kneeling and the flags, and now we're talking about yeah. people dying because of a regulation. And it, it shouldn't be politicized. No. You know, it's not a political thing. I mean, right. if that's dangerous, it's dangerous. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't need one of those in my house. And my family, my brother has $30,000 guns. We don't have any guns that are right. automatic guns. Right. They're all semi-automatic. Right. And actually, you know? um, I, I have to say I did riflery at camp in when I was in sixth grade, and it was cool to be. It's target practice. Yeah, I would rather shoot a bow and arrow personally. I do. Yeah, I, I like think that's too. more. I think that's more a skill. Right. Uh, it's not just aiming. It's there's a lot more involved. But um, I think to me, and this is not. I'm not. I'm not a gun aficionado collector. But to me, it, it seems more um, a pure gun right. love to have a beautiful flintlock rifle right. than. Uh, bump stock on and on. it's harder I mean exactly. it, the skill level it's is higher exactly. I mean I've shot black powder guns I've shot that's what I I'm actually saying. my favorite is handguns that's so because it's so much harder and, and it's, it's it, more you know, a skill. yeah so that to me using that bump stock is not a skill because all you have to do is move and I'm guessing because I've never used one right. I'm guessing you just have to move the thing from side to side because it's already firing for you right. and it's there's no aiming or, yeah yeah he didn't care right. he just was strafing the crowd yeah. like you would if you were in a you know you machine gunist in a tank yeah. or something not yeah. that I've done that either no but that's the purpose of a gun like that is to, to is kill for people. war right. I mean it's a de it's to right cause death right you know and, and and I mean if you you know there's snipers or whatever but but something like that it, it right. honestly the public has no Right. purpose having exactly. that and I do you know and I and I talked yeah. about the Ferrari thing because I was trying to thinking here I'm like I don't want one of those yeah but I'm like why do people want them why is that that's Ferrari? that's I would want a Ferrari yeah but I mean like how or do you Porsche. like I was trying to think about that like why do they feel why do people feel so strongly about these rights why yes. is that that's well, I guess that's where it comes down to is exactly. like why why yeah. do you think you have the right to have that well, I, I support I support the right I support to the Second arms. Amendment. Yeah, absolutely. I believe we should have the right to bear arms. Absolutely. I believe gun owners should have a right to have a gun. Yeah, I fully support that. Where I get concerned, as you're saying, is when it's not just about owning right. the gun; it's about using the gun on a person right. intentionally to kill them or several of right. them. You know, it's not about so. And I don't think most gun owners want to do of that. Not. But but I think like why right. why do they want that right? And I guess that's kind of where this discussion. Self defense. Yeah, but but why do you need a gun like that? I mean, you don't. Yeah, I mean, like why? I mean, 
I like Ferraris. I like sports cars. That's great. So I can understand. That's why I made that analogy. I'm like, well, why do they? Why do they feel? It's so power. what's the what's the power. psychology behind it? Why do why do you need that gun? Why is that a law that has to be blanketed across the country? Mm-hmm. I mean, well, that's the question. Why do why do we everybody be able need to be able to buy oh. that? All right, yeah, so we ahead. have Craig Nation, and, and Craig, I'm so glad because you actually have called in before or sent an email before. We really appreciate your point of view. We want all points of view. Mm-hmm. Um, so Craig says, because the slippery slope. Read one first. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Uh, this says, don't forget we have three gun clubs in Hopkinton. Yeah, we do. And we're we're fine with gun clubs, and, you know, we agree with that. Wait, um, wait he's not done with his comment. Oh, he's still typing. Well, wait. <laughs> Keep going. Okay, so I, I I think the gun clubs in Hopkinton are actually a, a valuable thing. And I yeah. think, you know, there are a lot of people who like to go hunting. Um, and I think they're, they're, they're shooting a rifle or, or a gun practice and, and all of that. And I've been to the gun clubs. I yep, love it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is a very valuable thing here. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have three gun clubs in Hopkinton. Lots of guns here and a very safe place to live. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think he's saying it's a slippery slope because if you start restricting... Is that what the fear is? Gun, gun use at all, yeah. then what comes next and what else do they restrict and what do they take away? And those are our rights. I fully agree, th- Craig, that we should have the right to bear arms to protect ourselves. We should have the right to go to a gun club and practice shooting practice. I like archery, as I said. I have shot a rifle. Well, I guess the question is, is does he believe in automatic guns and a right. bump stock? I, right. I think, again, right. the bump stock is the problem. Yeah, I mean, that's like, where is that slippery slope? Exactly. I mean, like, I think... The, you know, Massachusetts has very, very strict gun laws compared to where I came from. Right. You know, and everybody out there is like, oh, my God, the gun laws are terrible. But I know tons of people that lo- own guns legally. And, right. And it's okay. But mm-hmm. I'd like to pose a question back to Craig. What do, What are your beliefs in that? And I know you're in on In terms a, of the automatic the, weapon? The automatic weapon. And the bump do, stock. Yeah, and the bump stock. I yeah. mean, like, what do you, you know, like, I guess that's what we're discussing. We're bottom. not discussing gun right. rights. We're yep. Discussing a, a you know a, a weapon a mass I mean it can cause mass destruction I mean I teach those classes on you know what's the difference between a bomb or you know like something blows up and you can you know you can mm. take a lot of life so. yeah oh yeah and that's the problem it's you know I think and we love to hear all opinions mm-hmm. um, uh, I think it's where the lives get lost in a, on a mass scale because of a bump stock. So it's really not about the guns, in my opinion. I think people have a right to have guns, but yeah, when it becomes yeah. something that's only used for mass destruction and a crazy person has a hold of it, yeah. that's where it's a problem. And we can't identify those folks that have those right. indicators. I mean, how many times have we heard, oh, we didn't know or we didn't... Well, his brother, yeah. his girlfriend, yeah. I don't know. Um, so there, there are some big concerns there. Um, mm-hmm. Craig says the pers- purpose of the Second Amendment as I understand, is to protect the citizens from a tyrannical government. Yeah. Amen. Right. I think we have the right to bear arms. Um, I but think that also, might be he, why he's saying that the bump stop should, I, it maybe. sounds like he's saying uh, that's, that we should it. have the same arms as the government. And I do think that it wasn't so it begun because it, we needed a militia. Oh, we anyway, we are out of time, I'm sorry to say. And um, so this we're going to see you next time with uh, Lisa and Margie. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Peace out.